Hello everybody, welcome back for another video. Hope you're all doing fantastic and that you're all having a wonderful day. A very big thank you for all the support on Money Rules, on the Travel Channel, and for everyone, as always, who leaves a like or who comments. I'm going to talk as freely as possible here. Not going to try and go on a rant, but it's more of a I just simply want people to understand exactly what's going on and what should be going on. And it appears to me, especially since yesterday, uh, we have collectively, cryptocurrency uh gotten to a space that just doesn't make any sense. So I'm going to try and make an effort to make you understand. Not saying that you do not understand, but I'm going to, if you have friends or family members or simply anyone... Uh, who doesn't really get what all of this is, even if they are in the market, uh, please explain it to them. For those of you not looking at the screen, uh, yesterday was the day that we were supposed to have received numbers once again. Uh, these were consumer numbers, these were inflation numbers, numbers from a number of stock exchange companies who were telling us how much money they did or did not make. Uh, part of the problem, if you will, is there's something called the Consumer Price Index. And I explained to you earlier this summer as to exactly what it was because a lot of people, not that you were confused, but you kind of get the idea. It's how they uh, gauge how much inflation actually is. So it's basically they take a list of items that they assume that consumers are purchasing, throw them into a in a literal or illiteral basket, if you will, um, and say, these things have gone up by this much. That's how much inflation has gone up. Part of the problem is, is that these items actually change on a frequent basis. So they may have a loaf of bread. They may have some eggs. They may have some milk, what have you. Very basic things, oranges. They see how much they've gone up, and they say that that is currently what inflation is. This is a terrible way of gauging exactly where inflation is because also things that have to be taken into account is how much your rent raised. I know that there are a lot of people out there who have received letters right now that say, hey, your rent next year is going up to this month. You take out the good old calculator and you say, hey, that's a 25% increase. There are many, I, I shared videos before on Twitter where they were showing people whose rents have gone up by 50% in the United States alone. Some people even had their rent completely doubled as they were given, uh, so they say, um, nicer amounts of rent during the last two years, but now it's time for it to go to market. If you look at the inflation numbers and you say, well, the, the current numbers that we received for the consumer price index were 8.3%, meaning that the inflation rate is up by 8%, but then you compare it to the other costs of things that people actually have to pay, especially if you look at gasoline, petrol, or other things of the sort, you may have also noticed those have not only gone up by 8%. So the entire idea that inflation within the United States has only gone up by 8% is just a way for the people who raised inflation, the Federal Reserve, to kind of cover their backside and say, well, it, it's only 8% and not the actual 27 or 30% that it probably actually is in many other countries. It is a lie. You are being lied to. And that's just how the numbers go. Part of the excessive problem that we are having right now is, is that upon hearing this news, I posted this on Twitter, uh, the stock market fell. And I'm going to tell you why the stock market fell. The stock market falls because the stock market is mainly based, especially over since 2009, 2010, 2011, uh, is based off of what you call fake money or funny money. The Federal Reserve realized that one of the only ways after the 2008, 2009 crash to keep most of the economy propped up was by creating and printing extra money that they then pushed into the stock market. And this was done in a number of ways by buying securities and or equities, what have you. A lot of people were able to take out uh, free money, if you will, 
uh, with the inflation rates, and therefore they were able to pump that into the market. They tried stopping this around 2013, 12, 13, and 14, and I believe maybe even 15. There were discussions of them turning off a little bit of the money printer uh, to try and cool off the markets and also cool off the Federal Reserve having to uh, push money into the market. The market did not react to uh, that the way that they expected, and the market actually dropped. As the market, more or less, I'm going to have to spell this one out, is now D-R-U, space, 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 uh, N-K, all one word, you know how to speak English, uh, on the money printing aspect of all of this. So when we entered into 2020 and things were looking grim and we were all told to stay home, the only way to really prop up markets was by, you know, as they say, turning on the money printer. Brr, rr, 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 rr. Cool. Got it. Amazing. The issue with that is, is that they did it so much that it actually caused the stock market to rise. A lot of this extra free money that we had and the lower interest rates, which were meant to keep the stock market afloat, a lot of that extra money sloshed around the world. People were buying tons of art, tons of real estate, while, you know, once again, this 2020, 2021 event uh, was raging throughout the world. And a lot of that money flew into the cryptocurrency market as well. So we were able to see gigantic new highs. And I assumed a number of things. And, and this, was, this was blatant stupidity on my part. Because I thought that people understood why we have Bitcoin or the purpose of Bitcoin or what Bitcoin is actually for. Remember how I've always said that historically in the past, uh, we've always, see, always seen instances where a country is doing terribly economically. A country's economy has collapsed. A country announces that their inflation rate is 40%. We see a bank run in that country. That is to say, uh, things are looking bad economically and people literally pick themselves up off their couches and they run to their closest bank to try and take all of their money out of the bank as they realize that things aren't looking too good. It's called a bank run. Previously before in the past, whenever we got news that this was happening, Bitcoin's price rose. Can anyone tell me why Bitcoin's price rose? I'm sure there's one person out there who knows why, but I, you, I can't hear you because I'm talking into a microphone. The, the, the idea is that Bitcoin is deflationary. Bitcoin has an inflation rate, but 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 it remains constant because of the algorithm and the protocol. We know what Bitcoin's inflation rate is. Every four years, this inflation rate gets cut in half, which causes Bitcoin to become more deflationary as we continue on. The news of me constantly saying out loud that by the time we reach 2032, I believe that's the year, there will only be 1% of Bitcoin left to actually mine. Once again, 99 point something percent of Bitcoin will have been mined and it will take over 100 years to mine the remaining 1% of Bitcoin. It will become extremely scarce and the network will continue, but the people who have Bitcoin will be the only ones who basically have Bitcoin. The entire idea is that when we see another currency inflating, Bitcoin tends to rise as Bitcoin, in essence, is safer money. Bitcoin does not inflate forever. I can tell you exactly how many Bitcoin there will be in 130 years. You cannot tell me how many US dollars there will be in 140 years. Because the amount is nearly infinite. They can print it forever for as long as the U.S. is around. That's how many U.S. dollars they can print. I do not agree with everything this man has to say. But by golly, I was very close to retweeting what he said yesterday. Uh, one of the Winklevi twins posted. And I could feel his annoyance and his anger. Because it shows that a lot of people within the cryptocurrencies, and once again, I'm trying to use my words as politely as possible. An enormous amount of people in the cryptocurrency space don't understand basic economics. They don't understand the actual flow and creation of money. And a lot of them, what's the, what's the ver very nice way of saying it? Mm, I don't think I can find it. I'm, my mind is going at, at a million words per minute right now. It's... um. 
what's the what's the term for it? Where you you are you are willfully stupid. I I I can't figure out what the nice way of of saying that. Willfully ignorant. There, I, I I was very very close to understanding exactly what's going on. To understand or to not understand that you are selling off your Bitcoin in relation to the the most powerful currency on the planet inflating lets me and lets even Tyler Wengovas understand that this doesn't make any sense. Bitcoin is a deflationary currency by nature. The idea that other currencies are inflating should only strengthen Bitcoin. People are now trading Bitcoin as if it were a stock or a company. Bitcoin is the largest payment processing network on the planet that runs 24 hours a day. And the craziest part is there is a there's a Twitter page, I forgot what it's called, and it it notes every single day how long Bitcoin has been running. Yesterday, what a day. Yesterday marked the the 5000th 5000th day that Bitcoin has been running without any hiccups. Bitcoin processes trillions of dollars and can be used by anyone at any given time is deflationary is and is in insanely rare. There are nearly 8 billion people on this planet with only 21 million Bitcoin to actually be had. The tweet that the, the, the Winklevoss basically stated was that I don't get what's going on right now. I don't understand why Bitcoin is, Bitcoin fell by around eight to nine percent. For those of you who didn't see the charts, Ethereum fell by nine, ten percent. Like everything, it was a straight line down. The moment this news came out, and I saw the charts, I was getting ready to go meet a friend. Hello, friend. You know exactly who you are, and I knew, and I knew immediately what happened. So many people who have entered the cryptocurrency space don't understand. Once again, trying to be nice. Basic economics. You you scream loudly always the idea of supply and demand and how important it is, but you don't understand the basics of supply and demand. Of how high inflation actually is around the world and how terrible it is for fiat paper currencies. They're going down. We are witnessing the demise, the current historical demise of paper currencies. And the only other thing that logically at the moment makes sense is a digital currency like Bitcoin. You can even insert the name of your other coin. If your coin has a fixed supply or your digital currency, your crypto is deflationary, they should have all risen yesterday based on the idea that the world's largest currency, the U.S. dollar, continues to rise and there seemingly is almost no way to get it under control. Historically, we've seen within the cryptocurrency space, when that happens, people tend to flee to stronger assets that are deflationary or don't have the same properties as the US dollar. That's that's Bitcoin. And you could even say in less than 24 hours, when we have true deflation on the Ethereum network, that that will be ETH. You can make the case that it's also XRP. Why could it be XRP? Because all the XRP that will ever be created is already in the world. There's a coin burn on XRP as well. It is also deflationary in nature. Why do you think so many coins, or the mantra is within the cryptocurrency space from a lot of the creators is, we need some kind of a coin burner for the coin to actually be deflationary. It helps it to rise in value, not only by the scarcity aspect, but also be because of the the inverse correlation to the US dollar and other fiat currencies that are continuously rising. Once again, the inflation rate in the United States is not 8.3%. It is probably 30 or 40%. But you as a country cannot in any way announce that you have the strongest or largest currency on the planet and it is inflating by nearly 40%. We've seen other countries who report generally on their real numbers, and this is why we saw a couple of countries have uh, um, inflation rates of 40, 79, 
122% because they're probably going after the exact numbers. The idea of this is the basket of goods that people are buying and that's all that inflation is. On top of that news, uh, we now have indications that as inflation rates are still very high comparatively to what they thought they would be, that the, the Federal Reserve might be raising interest rates by 1% as opposed to 0.75 that we've heard about so many times over the course of this year. This is incredibly great for Bitcoin because Bitcoin is deflationary. There's not a lot of Bitcoin. And we can right now, and hear me out here, here's the craziest part. And And I mean, once again, I don't think I've been mean in this video. I try to just tell you what's going on. I don't know why, one, People listen to people like Elon Musk or these other people who really only care. That's one thing I will never understand, why this thing is is, is also in the air. But he, he, hear me out here. We currently live in the year 2022. When I was a kid, that sounded like the future. Boy, howdy. I can't believe it. Look how far we've come. You're listening to me right now. You're either holding it or it's on a desk. It is a piece of metal and plastic and glass that is connected to a worldwide network that is wireless. And yet somehow you still hear me, maybe even through your wireless headphones. Right. Cool. We're all in the future. Established. We have a payment network right now that we can all start to use to get away from inflation. It doesn't have to be created. It's already there. It's been running for 5,000 days. You want quick and instantaneous payments that gets you away from the banking system that has a one Satoshi fee? You use the Lightning Network. Period. We could all be using Bitcoin right now, but people are using Bitcoin as a stock, as if it were part of some sort of company. The cryptocurrency market collapsed in price yesterday based off of news that a competing currency is rising. There's more of it than there was the day before. There's still the same amount of Bitcoin that will be created for 8 billion people on the planet. Once again, trying to be as uh, nice as possible. The The terrifying part is that If we get any indications that by the end of this year, that the Fed will raise the interest rates by 1% this month, half a percent next month, and then the month after that, another 1%, we are going to see a dramatic destruction in prices of the cryptocurrency market because people are selling Bitcoin based off of terrible economic data from a competing currency. Bitcoin logically should be up. Remember months ago when I was I'm nearly like I am now, screaming into the microphone, we should be above a $100,000 Bitcoin. I was told these things back in 2013, 14, and 15. At some point, the US would not be able to get inflation under control and we would see a massively inflated US dollar. Based off of the principles of Bitcoin and what it used to do before in the past, before a lot of people got into the market and didn't understand what they were holding, Bitcoin's price always rose. Because the, the only people in the space before 2018 and dare I even say 2017 were what I would call true believers who understood that. If it looks bad over there, this is great for Bitcoin. Why do you think that guy, what's his name, Peter something, hates Bitcoin so much? Because he was there during the time where people kept on saying, during an economic downturn anywhere in the world, Bitcoin will do great. And gold may rise as well, but not as much as Bitcoin. Do you remember what happened? During an economic downturn, economic collapse, the collapse of a central bank or the collapse of a country, gold would rise by 2% and Bitcoin would skyrocket by 14 to 18%. It's because the people who were into Bitcoin understood that Bitcoin is finite. 
In another four years, the amount of Bitcoin that are out there is going to be cut in half by the issuance rate. People who are into Bitcoin now do not understand any of this. And the worst part, here's the worst part of all of it. You thought everything I just told you was terrible? Here's the worst part. Banks understand this. The very wealthy, the people who actually even maybe even took economic courses, understand exactly how big Bitcoin is. Didn't it seem a little odd that through all of this and Bitcoin's price falling, that we keep having banks announce that they're getting into the cryptocurrency space? They understand that the US dollar is dying. It won't be around for a very long time. And it even may be, but in a very terrible position. Didn't it seem really weird that all the banks keep buying up Bitcoin to be able to allow their clients to also have portions of Bitcoin. What do you think they see coming that you don't? The idea that even a bank would be into Bitcoin is something that still boggles my mind. To think that a bank would understand and has been collecting openly. Once again, this is no longer an actual secret. Even the idea that there's only 21 million Bitcoin and this bank has accumulated a large portion for themselves. And once again, they cannot sell Bitcoin to their clients unless they already have Bitcoin. You cannot. It, it, it mathematically does not make any sense. I cannot sell you a phone if I do not have phones myself. The idea that there are only 21 million Bitcoin and these banks and these companies and these hedge funds are actively buying in front of your face means that there's less Bitcoin for you and your family to have over the course of the next 140 years. And people go crazy over these, these new terrible crappy coins that keep coming out that break nine times over the course of a year and have arguments with each other on Twitter as to how their crappy coin is better than their crappy coin. What what are what are what are what are people not getting? How much clearer does this have to be? So it says geez Louise, this article. It says why Bitcoin could be about to pump if this signal is right. No. No, 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 no. The vast majority of people in this space are far too stupid to understand anymore. Once again, trying to be nice. That's me being nice, FYI. Because I thought we would have gotten to the point, I, I assume that anyone who's watching this channel, I talk very bluntly. I, I don't sugarcoat things. I don't try to make you feel like a better person at the end of the day. I try and tell you exactly what's going on in the world, whether that be good or bad. So I assume if you have continuously watched and listened to this channel, you, 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 you more than likely understand or you get it. I'm, I'm not here to baby you ever. I am not here to hold your hand and say, well, well, may, maybe your crappy coin will do good in the future. It could, I mean, when, when the cryptocurrency market pumps, I'm, that's not what I'm here for. This is mainly, I guess, against or talking about everyone else, nearly everyone else, who doesn't really get it. The coins that are mainly in the news are Bitcoin and Ethereum, nearly every single day. So you, you, you have a good idea as to what Bitcoin and Ethereum are doing or what the general news around them actually is. Um, on top of that, you might be shocked to learn uh, stock markets fell. <laughs> Whoa, I can't believe that. Yeah, stocks fell on the, on the inflation news. Do you understand what I mean when I say that Bitcoin should have gone up and historically has gone up? Why the gold guy hates us. Because he kept on saying that Bitcoin is nothing. No one's going to be using Bitcoin. Bitcoin isn't a hedge against inflation or economic downturn. But it was for about a good eight years. A large portion of the people who got into the space only know Bitcoin as something that's on Robinhood. Or that's on a so-and-so exchange. And they trade it as if it's not the most sound money on the planet. And it drives me nuts because the worst part is these people who sold off their Bitcoin 
if we have any movement, I mean hyper movement up in the price and prices begin to pump once again for whatever reason, I'm not sure the world is stupid, begins to pump for whatever reason, these people will then have less Bitcoin than they had before. You realize we keep getting news about, you know, whales buying up the lows in the market. Who do you think those whales are? Have you not paid attention to the banks who are getting into the cryptocurrency space, to the hedge funds, to the countries? Oh, I, ha I have some great news for all of you, which is only going to make this a lot sweeter. Uh, when you really, when you absorb the next news that's coming up, the next, I think, three news stories, when you, I want you to absorb them. I mean, really, really absorb them into your soul and think when that news came out, Bitcoin fell down as well. Imagine getting news. I don't know where you live. Imagine, imagine you live in a place that needs development. Things are kind of falling down, falling apart. You get news that someone's pushing a trillion dollars into your neighborhood, your area, to build new stores, new groceries, new everything. I mean, your infrastructure, your building is going to look amazing after. And property values in your area fall by 25%. That's how the news is. At the moment, that's all the price news that we have. The stock market fell. We should be wet. On the idea that the US dollar is done for, we should be well especially over the, my gosh, the last six months, we should be well over a $100,000 Bitcoin just even based off of the idea that the US dollar is inflating and they can't get it under control and in the next two years, Bitcoin's issuance rate is going to drop. Nothing more. Nothing more. Those three things, we should be above a $100,000 Bitcoin. The, 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 the other news that governments... Governments, 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 not even the banks are buying up Bitcoin because they see that the US dollar is falling apart. We should be at a 100 to $200,000 Bitcoin. The idea that the world's economy is crumbling and we have a place to put our money, a 24 hour network that does not close on weekends or evenings that you can send money around the world on instantaneously for less than a tenth of one cent, Bitcoin's price should be near half a million dollars. You don't understand how big this actually is. Why do you think there's so much pushback from so many political whatever against Bitcoin, against the cryptocurrency space, against deflationary currencies? Because they can't get it together and we figured out how to. And people within the cryptocurrency space don't understand that we have access to something like Bitcoin. It drives me up the wall. You know how like I always make the joke, but it's really not a joke. Like I want it to make sense. I want logic to enter the space. Um, that's the price news that we have right now. Um, cool. We'll see what happens. I assume unless collectively we actually get it together as a community, uh, we're probably going to continue dropping in prices until around, I would say, November, December. The Fed can't logically raise interest rates forever. They, they can't continue to go on and have an 18% interest rate. So at some point, they will turn the money printer back on and the crypto market will go back up. But that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> we know that inflation is high. Bitcoin, Ethereum, XRP, Litecoin, you name your coin. These are not stocks. These are, these are digital currencies, many of which are deflationary. Right. That's the price news. And yeah. Let's move on. Once again, keep this in mind. This news was released and Bitcoin's price fell. A group of Wall Street titans, Fidelity, Charles Schwab, 
and Citadel, among others, are collectively launching a cryptocurrency exchange called EDX Markets. I'm going to say that once again. Companies worth trillions of dollars have collectively decided that they are going to be launching a cryptocurrency exchange because they themselves have already amassed enough Bitcoin. They are Fidelity, Charles Schwab, and Citadel. Oh, also uh, Paradigm and Sequoia and uh, Virtue uh, Financial. A Wall Street collective is launching a crypto exchange, EDX Markets, announced today it plans to launch a cryptocurrency exchange for retail and institutional investors. That is for the rich and for everyday normal people. EDXM intends to be the first of its kind within the realm of centralized crypto exchanges by facilitating trading through trusted intermediaries. It aims to provide the best prices by aggregating liquidity from multiple market makers. Should I repeat that again, or did everyone get that the first time? You understand that this means that they've been into crypto for a while. When we keep getting news that these companies, institutions, these aren't even companies anymore. These are, they're worth trillions of dollars each. Not even collectively. They are worth trillions by themselves. Have begun to accumulate crypto since 2014 to 2017. And now they're creating crypto, a, a cryptocurrency exchange together. What does that tell you about the future of the space? What does that tell you about the trust that they have in the Bitcoin system? Of how big they believe that Bitcoin is, 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 is going to get or where it's going to go? I don't even have to read anymore. I don't even have to say any more actually on this. Uh, not, not even one bit. Um, so, on the news that from the rumor that we got from Michael Saylor. Uh, Michael Saylor said yesterday that he had overheard that Fidelity was launching a cryptocurrency exchange. And it just happens to turn out that there's actually a few extra trillion dollars uh, who were also, uh, what do you call it, um, getting into the space already, you know, whatever. Yeah. So that's the um, rich people are buying because they understand. I'm going to be very sad one day. When Bitcoin actually hits a million dollars, I know you would assume I'd be happy. Because all the people around the world who could have gotten into it, they won't have any Bitcoin. They will have sold it all off. I had a couple of friends, a couple, less than a handful, that is to say less than five, um, who had Bitcoin. And over the years, they've sold it off. For whatever reason, they wanted to sell it off. They wanted to buy a new car. They wanted to buy a new so-and-so. They wanted to go on vacation. So, and you know, what have you. Can you guess how much Bitcoin they have left? It's less than like 0.05, if even. So, um, that's the Fidelity, Charles Schwab, um, and like three other names are launching their own cryptocurrency. And, 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 and prices fell. On confirmation that that these 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 companies uh, all own Bitcoin. News. All right, <laughs> let's move on. Also in the news, um, Bitcoin's hash rate has um, skyrocketed. Um, this is significant news in that um, <laughs> historically. There goes that word again. We've seen that when people who are mining Bitcoin have a lot more uh, trust and or faith in the market itself, and they foresee Bitcoin's price rising higher, uh, they tend to plug in, if you will, their computers even more so or at a quicker rate or add on more computing power uh, because they're anticipating a large uh, boost in Bitcoin's price. The idea normally being... Ah, Bitcoin's around $2,000. It's not profitable to actually make a Bitcoin anymore. Let me unplug my computers. It costs $25,000 or it costs $25,000 to make a Bitcoin. Bitcoin's price is at 20000 
But Bitcoin's price should be a lot higher. Let me turn on my computers. Uh, we are now at a brand new all-time high for Bitcoin's hash rate. And on that news as well, guess what Bitcoin did? You got it, dude. Bitcoin fell in price. I need answers. Like I, I need actual, 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 actual answers. And no one can provide them. <laughs> no one can provide them at all except for uh, the people who are selling off. And, the, and, and the, these people won't learn. I think that's always the worst for me as well. It's not like they're going <gasps> to, whoa, I shouldn't have sold my Bitcoin because Bitcoin is deflationary and it's actually potentially could be the new world currency. Remember a couple of years ago, for those of you who weren't here, when we heard from the head of the New York Stock Exchange and the head of the NASDAQ, they both said openly in 2018, yeah, Bitcoin's probably going to be the, the, the if, if you will, the one or the only uh, world currency. And when they said that, that just solidified it for me. That I, th 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 There was kind of no going back uh, because rich people have rich friends and they've all been talking together about all of this. Uh, so on the news that Bitcoin's network is stronger than ever and people are accumulating massive amounts of Bitcoin, there will be no Bitcoin left for poor people. Isn't that the saddest sentence you've ever heard in your entire life? The, the wealth of Bitcoin will be concentrated in, in so few hands that in 30 years, people will have a very big problem with it. And they will go into the streets and they will scream, why don't I have enough? Where's my Bitcoin? And I know you can see it as well. I, I can't be the only one uh, who has this vision. It's happening now. I've had an issue for nearly all of my life once I figured out what money was, and I thought so many times... Now, and he, 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 here's me being very, very open. So many times I saw people who had the opportunity to get into stocks, to buy real estate, to make money 20, 30 years ago, and they didn't do it. It's kind of the same right now. You have the opportunity. This is not even blatantly or remotely financial advice. You have the opportunity to make an enormous amount of money right now. Will you choose to hunker down for the next five years? And I don't mean that whole uh, um, hustle culture mindset, like do it until you drop. No, I mean two hours a day. Two hours a day onto something that you really want to build a business or something. Even, even allocating a certain amount of money into a market that you want to invest in. Will you hunker down for the next five years to make sure that you secure your position in that market so that in five years, you have an egregious amount of money from what you've done? Only 20% will actually end up doing it. Why is it that people are only interested in something when it's out of their reach? I remember growing up, even whatever, that's a whole nother story. In and of itself, the point is, um, yeah, we are going to live in a world <clears throat> where Bitcoin more than likely, I don't know the future. It could be Ethereum. Ethereum is also going to be deflationary. We're going to live in a world where there is a cryptocurrency that is number one. The coin's price is going to be sky high. We can't even imagine how high it's going to be. And people who had the opportunity to accumulate that coin or even get fractions of that coin will be angry because they, 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 they can never figure out a way to blame themselves. It's always someone else's problem. Why am I not rich? I did nothing the last 15 years. I should also have the money that the people across the street had. Do you understand what an opportunity this is to even see Bitcoin's price at this number? It drives me wild that people still don't get it. That's the Bitcoin hash rate news. Uh-huh. Yeah. Let's move on. Once again, uh, Bitcoin's price fell on this news. So this news was released and Bitcoin's price fell down. The central bank of Bahrain, that is B-A-H-R-A-I-N, 
Plans to roll out a Bitcoin payment processing and payout solution in partnership with BTC payment processor OpenNode. Going to say that again. One of the richest countries on the planet has announced that they're going to be using Bitcoin for payment processing. I'm going to say that one more time. A central bank in one of the richest countries on the planet has openly announced that they're going to be using Bitcoin for payment processing for, 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 for money while the U.S. dollar continues to inflate. Did everyone get that? Bitcoin's price fell on this news. In a press statement published on the 13th of September, OpenNode stated that the solution is guided by the growing interest in digital assets across the Middle East. This just lets me know that I don't have enough crypto. This, this, this explicitly just lets me know that I've, I've, the, the, the last five years, I haven't been doing what I you know, should have been doing. I, I was not buying as much as I should have. I, I should have been buying 10x of everything. The company noted that the solution would be central to pushing economic growth while supporting businesses. They said this is a watershed moment for the people of Bahrain, the Middle East, and the Bitcoin economy as a whole. OpenNode's leading Bitcoin infrastructure solution continues to pave the way for countries, governments, and reputable financial institutions to adopt the Bitcoin standard and transact on the Lightning Network. Should I read all that again or did everyone get it the first time? How many do you need? How many governments do you need to openly tell us that they're using Bitcoin before you start getting Bitcoin yourself? How many institutions have to tell you that they've been buying up tons of Bitcoin before you realize that there's not enough Bitcoin for you and your family? How many? Can anyone give me a number? Do you need 50 institutions? Do you Oh, 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 oh. Are you are you one of those people that you need to hear the the that that the United States is doing it because everywhere else is a, is a, is a, is a is a complete wreck and you only believe in the United States? Is is that it? Cuz there are people out there like that. How many times have we had news that there are hedge funds around the world who have their own Bitcoin ETF outside of the United States. I've seen people, I can't hear it, but I've seen them suck their teeth on Twitter when I mention that. Well, the U.S. doesn't have one. You know, on this globe, there's more than one country. And I'm certain, I can feel it in my bones, there is one person watching this video. When I said the word Bahrain and Middle East, they suck their teeth and they probably even turned off the video because it was in the United States. I'm sure there's one. We all, we all know that kind of person. How many banks do you need to tell you that they're buying Bitcoin? How many countries? How many countries do you need to tell you? How many banks? How many institutions? How many small mom and shop businesses? You know that Bitcoin is finite, right? You know that there's not 39 billion Bitcoin. There's 21 million that will ever be made. And it's believed that around 6 to 7 million are lost and gone forever. That's not news that actually makes it into the news anymore. This was a very big thing years ago when Bitcoin actually moved how it should have moved based on world market conditions. For those of you who don't know, uh, back in the olden days... Bitcoin was worth nothing. It was worth half a cent, one cent, maybe even three cents. There are a lot of people who were mining Bitcoin on their home computers and they threw those computers out. There are tons of people who lost their passwords. Like literally, there are people who had 18,000 Bitcoin and they lost their password for their Bitcoin. They can never get it back again. The computers are gone. There are people who lost it on websites and other places. Like, it's just completely just not there anymore. So there's roughly only around 15 to 16 million Bitcoin that will ever be made. Ever. Ever. There are 8 billion people on the planet. 8 billion. 8 billion. And there's barely 16 million Bitcoin 
for you and your family to have. A central bank in one of the richest countries on the planet just announced that they're going to be using Bitcoin. Anyone got that? No? No one? People still not listening? Nobody? All right. Well, yeah. Um, a large portion of the rest of the news had to basically do uh, with Ethereum and the merge. We're roughly around 23 hours away, give or take, uh, depending on where the current hash rate actually uh, is right now. So yeah, by this time tomorrow, by the time you awake from your slumber, we should uh, be at Ethereum 2.0. Crazy to think about, right? Been a long time coming. Pretty, I'm pretty sure that they're doing the fusion dance, actually. Like, it kind of... Anyway, right. As always, I really hope people get it. I sincerely, 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 sincerely do. You know what you see. It's not even a shrinking middle class. There is... In 10 years... You will either be in deep poverty or you will be rich. There will be no in-between. I really hope that people get it. As always, a very special thank you to my Patreon supporters. GBU Wally, Manny Cryptos, Crypto Gambino, Bubble Mode, How's Life Austin, Auspicious Agile and Blockchain, Jamie Saad, Blockchain Simplified, and let's move on. Empire Queen, Roman Geba, Bitcoin Ben, Arachno Dave, Tony Ambroski, The Dealer's Den, Captain Something in the Z-Way Lay, Mo Barazi, VB Nerd 21, Miguel Grolet, Lauren De Silva, Quoted Biddy, Troy Allgood, Space Case, Need a Miracle, Pat Ternoster, Navarro Williams, Utopia 569, Moonman High, XRP, Martin Stoyer, Nostromo, John Sarson, The Animal Reader, A Bibliophobia, Todd Mullis, Adam Grasick, Wise Night Owl, 242 to the World, Bankroll Network, Crypto Artist, Cold E3D, Setsuna, Richie Rich III, Paxis, Nick Mangialavori, Jim Garner, Jeremy Fox, Minting Coins, Yes to Crypto, Bodie McBoatface, Anytime Fitness, Monks Corner Staff, Bake Me a Cake, Tigero Macho Nisa, On Crypto with Lionel, and Crayola Michelle URL. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for your continued support. Thank you to everyone out there who's still listening, who's still watching, uh, who always leaves a like, always leaves a comment, or uh, has subscribed. Thank you for your continued support through all of this nonsense. I think I handled it pretty well. If you, You've seen me other videos. I've been slightly unhinged because it doesn't make any sense. Like, nothing in this space is actually working as it should. And it's very frustrating because I made this channel because I want people to succeed. As stupid as that sounds, I don't care if you believe me or not. I'm already myself retired. I don't have to work. I do this because I want people to understand that you can also make tons of money in this market. And to have people blatantly not understand or watch other YouTube channels through the years that give you no actual proper advice and they just tell you to push your money into as many crappy coins as possible. It hurts. It hurts so much to see, like... <laughs> it's very odd. It's very, very odd. Um, I think the literal only saving grace right now is uh, the Fed. As stupid as that sounds, or as realistic as that currently sounds, is for Jerome Powell... At some point by the end of this year or maybe next spring to say that he's not going to be raising interest rates anymore. That'll be the only thing that moves the cryptocurrency space higher. And then we're going to start getting news of how amazing Bitcoin is and how amazing Ethereum is and how crazy, you know, look at us, look at us go up in price. The, the bulls are back. Why are they not here now? Why are people not understanding how bullish it is that the US dollar is crumbling in front of us? That Bitcoin is finite and is being used by governments. 
and banks. And it's not, it's not like it's just like seven banks. There are hundreds of banks who are accumulating Bitcoin and they're doing it over the counter. They're doing it to make sure that the price doesn't move. <laughs> they're doing it so that you don't pay attention and you don't understand exactly how much money they're going to be making. What do you think the significance is of banks talking about that their eventual half a million dollar and million dollar Bitcoin? Remember the news that we got leaked before from the other banks who were telling just their richest clients and someone luckily <laughs> was sending us screenshots. One of the rich clients was like, hey, look what I just heard. The entire market's down. I don't know if there's anything that has bucked the trend, if you will. Bitcoin is at $20,300. It is down by 8.4%. Ethereum is at $1,619. It is down by 6.7%. Uh, I was hopeful for a very long time that Bitcoin would do something on its own. Uh, that even as we got closer to the merge, you remember we saying this. The idea that Ethereum, for, oh, for, for, for those of you who missed on uh, Money Rules, my other uh, crypto or whatever finance channel, uh, the, in 24 hours, it's 2-4, less than 24 hours, Ethereum's issuance rate, so the amount of Ether being created by the network, is dropping by 90%. That's 9-0. So it's not a Bitcoin halving, which cuts the issuance rate by 50%. The issuance rate on Ethereum is dropping by 90% in 24 hours. The only way to have any Ether in the future is by already owning Ether to create more of it. The, the burn rate is also going to accelerate as well. So Ethereum will become officially, officially deflationary in less than 24 hours, and the price is down by 6.7%. Uh, Solana's down by 12. Polkadot is down by 6. Avalanche is down by... That makes sense for the first time ever. Avalanche is down by 11 because Avalanche is usually going up. Anything crazy? Cosmos is down by 10. Nier is down by 11. Luna Classic is down by 13. Bop, bop, ba, da, bop. Apecoin is down by 10. EOS is down by 10% as well. Yep. What a what a stupid time to be alive. Uh, despite the prices being down, I do sincerely hope that you've all enjoyed or at least got something from it. Uh, because this is a lot. This is a lot to see. It, it's kind of like... Imagine JP Morgan Chase announcing that they were insolvent. We have guys we 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 we're broke. We we have about $14 left and we're hoping hanging on by a prayer and then JP Morgan stock went up by 39%. That's kind of exactly what what what's happening right now. Um yeah. I I haven't lost faith in the crypto market. I know that we will go back up. But it's off of a, a, a false a false merit, and if you will, a false narrative. <laughs> it's it's when the stock market goes back up. We are no longer our own uh, market. We are the stock market 2.0. Hope you all enjoyed. Hope you all are having a great day, great morning, great afternoon, great evening, wherever you are, wherever you might be. I do hope it's absolutely fantastic. Thank you all once again for watching, listening, liking, and or supporting. And I will most certainly be talking to you all soon. See you.